Hey everybody, a uh, quick little topic, a little introduction to kinetic energy and its roles in the rates of reactions. This is just a very beginning of a, the heart and soul of the first reactions unit in Chemistry 12. Um, and it's about kinetic energy and we will tie it into potential energy in the next video. So, kinetic energy. Uh, first thing first is all those reactants are moving around. They're moving in an X, Y, Z axis. Some are moving fast, some are moving slow. Some are not even moving at all. Um, this graph that you're staring at is called a distribution. And it's called a kinetic energy distribution. And it shows us approximately the ratio of reactants that are moving very slowly, um, sort of in that area very very general some reactants that are moving at a medium speed maybe in that area and then some reactants that are moving very very quickly in that area it's all approximate this distribution is supposed to show us that you do not have an equal amount of reactants moving fast or moving slow it is an unequal distribution of kinetic energy. An equal distribution would be a bell curve, equally distributed around a certain mean. We don't have that. So we have an unequal distribution. You're never going to be asked to draw these things in a class, but you have to take, to take information from them. We have to understand that certain molecules will be moving faster, most molecules will be moving at a medium speed and then some molecules will be moving slower. The faster the molecule is moving when it collides with another reactant you increase the chances of a successful collision in a reaction. The slower the molecule is moving you decrease the chances of a successful collision and chances are you'll have a slower rate. So the number one concept of a kinetic energy distribution is that you can change the kinetic energy by increasing or decreasing temperature. So let's pretend that this original graph is at 25 degrees, completely random. If I was to increase the temperature by say 10 degrees, and make it 35 degrees, my kinetic energy distribution must represent an increase in the kinetic energy of that reaction. I did not change the number of reactants. If I have a hundred reactants before, I still have a hundred reactants now. They are just warmer and vibrating and moving and have an increase in kinetic energy. This red line represents more fast moving particles. So the graph has been pulled to the right. It's still the same reaction, but the average kinetic energy has increased. If I was to cool the reaction down, there's less kinetic energy. The same hundred reactants are still present now my graph has to represent the same hundred reactants but with a lower kinetic energy on average. So the graph is pushed to the left. Yes, it's taller, but it's the same surface area as the original black 25 degrees and as the warmer red 35 degrees. The surface area is going to be the same because I'm not increasing or decreasing the concentration of the reactants I'm just increasing or decreasing the average kinetic energy of the reaction. The curve at a lower temperature is pushed to the left representing more slow moving molecules. The red curve pulled to the right represents more fast moving molecules. Okay, so if I give you three graphs, 
you should be able to figure out the coldest one and the hottest one. Coldest one would have the slowest reaction rate, and the hottest one would have the fastest reaction rate. Okay, big idea number one. Big idea number two. I cannot stress how important the idea of activation energy is, or energy of activation, however you want. The symbol is EA. Okay, I didn't make it up. I'm just telling you what I know. Every reaction has a minimum amount of energy required to start. The minimum amount of energy required to break the bonds in the reactants. The minimum amount of energy required to have a successful collision. This is one of the definitions that you must put into your own words and have a great understanding after the next couple of videos. So, on this kinetic energy distribution, there will be a line that tells you very clearly the minimum energy required to have a successful collision. Any reactant that is hitting each other, colliding with each other, with energy greater than that minimum amount, will react and it will be successful. Any reaction, reactant that possesses less energy than the minimum will just bounce off of each other and stay a reactant. So this big green line here says on the blue cold curve this small triangle of reactants possess the minimum energy required. The big green line on the red graph says any reactant to the right of that green line will possess the minimum energy required. We can see clearly that there are more red reactants at a hotter temperature that is successfully meeting the minimum energy level. The colder you get, the less reactants meet the minimum energy required. So the cold reaction will have a lower rate, slower rate, slower reaction. The red graph will have a faster rate. There are more particles here that are meeting the minimum energy requirement and that will equal a faster rate. We haven't fully defined what the activation energy is that'll be in later videos and later lessons but for now we are staring at two kinetic energy distributions we have a colder temperature showing us that the rate of the reaction will be less because there's less reactants that meet the sufficient or the minimum energy required the red reaction the hotter reaction the faster reaction has more kinetic energy and more reactants meeting the minimum energy required. There is a random rule of thumb it's called. It was on all the old provincial exams. It's not going to be in a test in this class. But it has been said that or discovered that if you increase the temperature of a reaction by 10 degrees the rate will approximately double. Increase it by 20 it'll double and double again. Increase it by 30 it'll double and double and double again. Just to give you the idea of how important temperature is in a reaction. My last little detail here says if the EA or the minimum energy required is so low, so to the left, that whether the temperature is warm or cold, because the EA is so low, it's just going to be a fast reaction anyway. If the minimum amount of energy required to start a reaction is so low, the reaction is so fast already, that increasing the temperature by 10 degrees is not going to have an effect. Again, this is not a test question. This is just us looking at all the little subtleties of, of this graph. Um, you cannot tell a difference between the blue and the red graph, which one's faster or which one's slower. So I'm never going to have an EA way down low. My EA is going to be up high. So there's going to be a total difference between the number of reactants that can or can't react. Okay? 
that's about it.